America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. The Meditation Museum in Silver Spring, Maryland offers a variety of courses and activities to make your life go a whole lot smoother. Located at 9525 Georgia Avenue, you will be able to experience the beautiful silence that's in the space. There are courses in Raj Yoga Meditation, Positive Thinking, Stress-Free Living, and Personal Development classes. For more information, call us at 301-588-0144 or visit us online at meditationmuseum.org. Hello, this is Kristen Hoffman, and it is with great love, joy, pleasure, and spirit that I am listening to America Meditating Radio Show. Hi, I'm Dr. Vin Verga, author of The Soul of All Living Creatures. And I listen to America Meditating Radio. Hello and welcome to America Meditating Radio. I'm your host, Sister Jenna. We're broadcasting from the beautiful Meditation Museum. That was the incomparable Diana Ross, amazing voice. It'll never get old for us, huh? And I want to thank all my friends for the shout out and um, on the radio show and just how special this community is and this tribe that we've created. I think many of the individuals who actually participate in tuning into America Meditating Radio are very sincere and very, very ready to make a change within themselves. 
so that they can be contributors to a world of continuity of all that's good. I'm not concerned about who needs to damage anyone anymore or who's breaking down anyone or how many wars people who are in power need to participate in to either create their legacy or in hindsight to say we're protecting the country from terrorism because we have seen for decades that the good voices and people have stepped in and said, why can't we have dialogue? Why can't we somehow make repair or amends? And and continuously, there's always something where the decision is to go into war. And so far, if we've looked at history, every time any country or ruler has ever gone into war, it's not a matter of anybody ever wins in that. But yet, it continues, right? And so for those of us in the work of transformation and trying to bring more peace and more power into existence, I am inviting you, stop fighting with those people. I would like us to create a tribe, to create a coalition, and to create an alliance of individuals who are going to contribute their thoughts, their words, and their deeds towards what's going to continue after that tribe self-destructs. And so there's no such thing as complete annihilation, but there is something in which stuff just can't continue in the same way that it's been continuing. And the irony is Many of us keep asking for a better humanity. Where Many of us are asking for a greater sense of prosperity. Many of us are asking for the perfect mate to live the rest of our lives with. How many of us have actually walked into that on a percentage level? One out of a million? Five out of a million? Ten out of a million? I don't know. I'm pretty sure the statistics are pretty overwhelming. And so I want to say if it's one of us out of a million, let's find many one of us. And let's come together as a tribe and begin to make a difference and change the status quo of investing in energy that is constantly robbing energy from the soul. This is my appeal to you as we walk into 2016 with our heads high and with our inner being in check and with the awareness that this is something that we've got to do for us. Look at your life and observe the many relationships that you have encountered where you did the right thing, but the other person interpreted it in the wrong way. And it became null. I think the same law is applicable to nations, countries, corporations, what have you. It's just this energy. Sometimes certain energies are no longer going to work for us. So you can't mix your not working self into a working institution or into a working scenario or into a working system. It's going to break that system down too. So we are being called as a tribe to change what's going on in the world by transforming ourselves and becoming the light for the world. We're looking forward to interviewing our wonderful Emmanuel Dagger. And he's a highly sought-after transformation specialist. So I'm going to look forward to having a beautiful conversation with him shortly. But before we go to Emmanuel, I invite you all to come into that zone, the kind that I really appreciate more than anything else, is for us to create the kinds of thoughts that can amplify our mental vibration in which our presence, unknown to us, begins to create peace and harmony in our humanity. Are you ready? Breathe in deeply. Release. Let's get off the grid and step inside the heart. In this meditation, I invite you to become aware of the two types of consciousness that reside within the soul. Let us choose the consciousness of light over the darkness of past stories, the history that gets into our way. Let us now remember our connection to the Supreme Energy, the Supreme Soul, the Being of Light. For far too long, we have allowed the external forces to dictate our inner force. And at this time, I choose to get off the grid and step inside the heart to be myself. I choose to no longer be under the influence of what the world tells me 
what my parents have told me. My spouse, friends, or anyone who has been a negative influence in my life. In this meditation, I stand strong in the original, eternal, imperishable worth of the soul. I, the being of light, the soul of power, I step into the heart and I become a being of love, a being of light and goodness. Good day, Sister Jenna. That was such a wonderful meditation. I really like that. Okay, I'm taking from the pocketbook of wisdom, and it reads, There is a part of you that is perfect and pure. It is untouched by the less than perfect characteristics you have acquired by living in a world that now manifests another story. This part of you is a still and eternal star-like energy. Make time to reach it, and this will bring you untold benefit. Learning to talk properly to the self is a spiritual endeavor. When you make a mistake, do you talk lovingly to yourself in your mind, or do you tell yourself off? Do you force yourself One habit recognizes your divinity, the other subtly shapes a nature of sorrow. Remain conscious of yourself as a spiritual being whilst playing your part in this material world. This is called true detachment. Have a wonderful day full of wisdom. Om Shanti. Thank you, Sister Gita, as beautiful as usual. Well, today we're very, very privileged to welcome Emmanuel Dagger. Emmanuel is a highly sought-after transformation specialist, holistic health practitioner, inspirational social media personality, I want to know more about that, and a motivational speaker. Emmanuel, considered by many, is a next-generation new thought leader. He's a gifted humanitarian who is devoted to assisting people in service, to the well-being of humankind. His mission is to help bridge the chasm between spirituality and money. And he's the author of the Amazon bestseller, Easy Breezy Miracles, and his new book is entitled Easy Breezy Prosperity, The Five Foundations for a More Joyful, Abundant Life. Today, Emmanuel will share his story of personal struggles as a child of war to living the American dream. Emmanuel, welcome to the America Meditating Radio Oh, my goodness. Thank you, sister. I'm so honored to be here today. Thank you. You're so welcome. Now, you have quite a large social media following, which I came to realize, and have been very successful in your work. How did you get interested in self-help, motivation, Mm. and also in healing others? You know, the first thing that I want to say about the social media is, in our line of work, to not see it as social media, but as an extension of who we are. So for me, it's another opportunity for spiritual practice and kindness and consciousness. So that's sort of how I view it. And I think that's why it's growing so fast is because the authenticity and that, you know, everything that is shared, it's always from me. I don't have other people doing that. So the reason why I've really gotten into this line of work is because, you know, my first years coming into this world, the first 10 years, I lived in Lebanon and you were talking so beautifully earlier about moving out of the consciousness of fighting against and coming into acceptance and awareness that we are making a change. And so as a child going through that experience, I remember internally knowing that I had a choice. The choice was either to contribute and continue to the dialogue of illusion and war and all of that, or that I could use my life in some way. And I got to see that through example from my mother who, you know, she always had a positive outlook, very, very kind and loving. 
And so I decided to do that. I wanted to help people. I wanted to use my life, everything that I saw, things that nobody should see. Um, I wanted to turn that around and show them that if I can overcome that, they can too. So that's where it came from. Very important. You know, I had a friend in Lebanon when there was that war or strife, and it was just such an unnecessary time. And I remembered the fact that she had her own spiritual foundation, that she was able to be of assistance to others. And I think that one of the most interesting things that our times are calling us, and I don't know if you could actually speak to this, is what could be the role of social media in terms of mm. building the internal resilience of people? Any ideas? Yes. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. I think compassion is so underrated in the sense of the society right now because, to me, compassion and sympathy are completely different energies. Sympathy is very much, you know, lowering our vibration, taking on usually very empathic people, you know, tend to do that, very sensitive people. And we feel sorry for, we feel bad for. And when I heard you speak earlier about elevating ourselves out of the fighting against, that to me is compassion. Because when we are in compassion, we no longer see the illusion. We see the truth of what's really happening, that even though there's someone that may not like me or they do like me, there's wholeness and perfection there. On a spiritual level, we are all whole and complete. So if we can wake up every morning and see through the eyes of what I like to call spirit or universe, and that energy mm -hmm. only sees love, it only sees love and only knows love, then everything will change. And I, that's what I do with my social media. How can I inspire? I don't complain on there. I don't write, oh, I had a bad day. You know, those are Nobody needs to hear that. You know, your friends can, your close friends, but you can use this opportunity for social media to inspire, to heal, and to prosper people. You know, and I think it's an important conversation to have because not many of us as individuals are mature enough to recognize the impact of our thoughts, words, and deeds, you know, at a broader level. I think we tend to be so self-serving or so self-focused that we forget mm -hmm. that whatever we're thinking and saying is rippling out in humanity, and it's mm -hmm. somehow impacting the way a person's going to think or behave who might not have the complete same sort of a spiritual DNA that you're carrying. And so to be so aware of what you are sending out in those ethers or on the ethers, I think it's so important. Mm -hmm. um, I want to congratulate you on your easy breezy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so your, much. <laughs> your book on easy breezy prosperity. How do you define prosperity to Emmanuel? Because for me, it's a lot to do with the quality of my relationships and then the mm -hmm. fact that I'm not hungry and I have shelter and security. You know, looking from your perspective, and coming from a completely different culture of thought than here in America. Mm -hmm. When you look at prosperity, that it's easy breezy, and majority of the highest percentage of people in this country are on welfare, mm -hmm. how do you define prosperity in this country especially, or even just for you first and then in this country? Okay, thank you for that question. So I would like to sort of start with more of my personal experience with prosperity. And to me, prosperity, the greatest prosperity is remembering who I am, who we are as spiritual, vast, infinite beings that are from the universe. We are universal beings. We are godly beings. We are not these small little people that we think sometimes that the mind likes to make us think that we are. So when I think of prosperity, and I think of who I am and I sort of contemplate, who am I? Where did I come from? How can I allow myself to step more into that? How can I expand into that? The truth is we have never been anything less than prosperous. We have never been anything less than abundant. Now, more on a financial level, you know, prosperity to me is truly honoring and respecting all life, including the energy and the frequency of money. See, a lot of people see the energy of money as this lifeless object, but you and I know better, and we know that it's a living, breathing energy that is here, that's part of the universe. See, if it's in the universe, it's alive. There's no doubt about that. So we have to honor every living, breathing energy the way that we would our best friend or the way that we would do a loved one. So that's the shift that occurred for me in the way that I experienced 
prosperity because as a child, I lived be way beyond the poverty level. We didn't have water. We didn't have hot water. We didn't have food for days. You know, I lived in a convent actually for 10 years. I was the only little boy living in a convent, but it was my safe haven. So it was just a lot of uh, very, very hard experiences. But I do know that in order for me to have released that and not recreate it as an adult in some way, I needed to shift my perspective of money. And that's what it was, is to see it as alive rather than this lifeless mm. object. Mm, I love what you're saying, especially the part where we've got to know who we are. And one of the most interesting things about that million-dollar question, which is an installation that we have in both of our museums here in Washington, is... It takes us time to know who we are, and I don't know if we'll be able to declare that until the tail end. Let me rephrase Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. What type of soul am I? That's going to take Mm -hmm. me time to get to at the end of the journey. However, who am I is a soul, Mm -hmm. and a soul who's Mm -hmm. making effort to realign my true self and my purity, and I'm trying to let go of my old stories, which are really not needed in this present time. Yeah. So I love when you said at the core of abundance or prosperity, it's a real interest to try to understand who are you and why are you showing up in the morning. I know that in the book, you've got some foundation, core mm. foundation parts about um, yes. generating more prosperity. Is it possible for you to share with us maybe just one or two core foundations? Yes. yes. So one of the foundations in the book is finding your happiness. So a lot of times when people ask me, I don't know what my purpose is. I really don't know what I should be doing. And so I ask them, okay, so what brings you joy? What makes your heart sing? And a lot of times people are not They don't know. And for those who do know, I'm so grateful because really you have it. It's like you have been doing the work. And for those who don't, that's okay. Know that just asking questions, what makes my heart sing? What brings me that feeling of, ah, yes, that's what I want you to contemplate on today. And so the prosperity foundation of finding your happiness is to simplify your purpose in that it's just to be happy. So whether it's to have a title of a job or to be a mother or a friend or a colleague, you know, whatever it is, an artist, all of that, what is the core foundation of that? It brings you joy. It makes you happy. So your only purpose in life is to be happy. And if that means sometimes that you have to take better care of yourself, you have to nurture yourself, you have to say no sometimes, all of those things, as long as you bring it back into a feeling state, the heart state of knowing what feels more expansive and what doesn't, then you are fully aligned with your purpose. You know why I believe that's such a powerful statement? There is an author that's coming out with a new book, and she claims that the next age that we're going to walk into is an age of intuition. And Mm. where we had like, we've got all the resources now, we've got the formulas, the methods, the templates. I mean, the guys on Wall Street really know how to play those stocks, right? And they know Mm -hmm. when when it's going up, when it's going down. It's the little guys who who really lose out in the market. But yet, it's not that it's always safe proof. There's still something where I've heard a lot of people, Emmanuel, share with us that I did this the right way. I played my cards Mm -hmm. right. I did that. I did. And this still happened to me. And I think one of the most important aspects here is sometimes if you're really listening inside to sense if this feels right, you can go with Mm -hmm. your gut feeling if even though it physically looks like you've got all the tools in place, do you Mm -hmm. intuitively feel that in the long run this is going to support your inner freedom? And I think that's a very important point that you've just um, just made. You know, in your book you talk about money as energy and you discuss how we can Mm -hmm. cultivate a healthy relationship with money. A lot of people look at money as just face value, but it's a Mm -hmm. spiritual thing. It's the mental space that you're in. Tell us a little bit more about when you look at money as energy What's your definition of that? You know, what's so interesting is I, again, going back to what I said earlier, is if you were treating your best friend the way that maybe a lot of us 
think or treat money, which is, you know, there's not enough of it, only greedy people have it, it causes wars, all those things. That's the behavior of people around that. It's what's bringing that thing to the surface from within them. It has nothing to do with the energy of money. It's their behavior around it. So what if money was just this energy that was having its own purpose, which is to be the purpose of circulation, giving and receiving? And at the core, what are we all giving and receiving? We're giving and receiving love because that's what everything is. So if we can allow ourselves to remember what money really is, then we can start to show it more honor and respect and kindness, the way that we would want to receive that from a friend or we would want to give it to a friend. So give it life. Give it humanity. Try that out for 28 days. I have the 28-day plan in the book, and uh, they say it takes 21 days to break a cycle and 28 days to begin a new one. And so I invite those who are listening today to try for 28 days. Just think about looking at money in a way that is more as a friend rather than a foe and respect it, honor it, and watch how the universe is going to bring opportunities and experiences <laughs> back into your life. <laughs> you know why I'm chuckling? <laughs> <laughs> in my 20s, very, very driven, Emmanuel, from an owner of two nightclubs to jet-setting across the globe to three luxurious cars parked in my <laughs> condominium overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, my God, I feel like going back there right now. No, <laughs> <laughs> To actually becoming a little sister, a yogi, totally where... Uh -huh. And this wasn't me running or, or going. I was at the top of my game. However, such a profound experience of God's light entered my consciousness, and it was bigger than the money I had. It was bigger than the yeah. beauty I was walking in a room with. It was bigger than the car and the beautiful condo. And here I sit here with you over the phone in the air and with all our friends listening in 25 years later, I've never felt more rich than I do today, and I don't yes. have a dollar in my pocket. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But, but, but the moral of this story is that I'm not worried. I mean, everything is taken care of. I'm not mm -hmm. worried because I've invested in relationship, friendship, and service to the world. And yes. I hear you speaking from that level very much, too, as we're having this engagement. Yes, and one thing that I'm so grateful that it sounds like you've really mastered is the art of receiving love and support, and those are equally as, um, as important as anything else, you know. Very true, very true. Now, your book includes that 28-day prosperity plan and journal, right? Yes. Could you tell our listeners maybe to start them off a little bit, like one or mm -hmm. two or three days? What, what can they start to do to just begin their own prosperity plan and then leave us with the website where individuals can yes. find out more about the rest of the days? <laughs> well, thank you so much again for having me here. It's just been such an honor, and I love your energy. I feel like we're instant friends. So the one of the processes in the 28 day that I really think is very simple and can just start right away is, you know, a lot of us have a hard time receiving. You know, we think, you know, if we receive, then people are going to want something in return or things like that in society. It's very much focused right now still on that. But I want to invite everyone to contemplate on giving themselves the opportunity to receive and the way to do that. For example, if someone asks you to take you out for lunch, a friend wants to take you out to lunch or gives you a compliment or wants to support you in some way, if it's hard for you to receive, I want you to out loud say to them, I'm going to honor you and I'm going to say yes. Because What's going to happen when you say that is you're going to register in your mind that by you saying yes to them, you're saying yes to spirit. You're saying yes to the universe. And you're opening yourself up to the, to the abundance of the universe. So I'm going to honor you and I'm going to say yes. And that's also going to empower them. They are going to be empowered. Oh, hmm, they're honoring me? Yeah, they're honoring me. So that's one little tip that I want you to try, and it's going to open you up. The other thing is we all know, and we've heard this, is gratitude. Gratitude and why we are grateful. So I am grateful for my friend because 
they are so loving and kind and supportive. I'm grateful for my bed because it keeps me warm and safe and comfortable. So add the why because the why actually registers to the mind because the mind is like a little child. It likes to, you know, it likes to keep us safe and protected and it doesn't really like a lot of change. So when you add the why, it's like internalizing and understanding immediately and registering this is why I'm grateful. And that actually allows and generates feelings of joy, love, putting you into flow, and then you get allow allow yourself to get into prosperity. And you can check out the book at Easy Breezy prosperity.com and uh, you can also go on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles uh, in your local area and uh, check it out there. Sister, I am so grateful for you. I really, I, I was so intrigued about the museum and I hope to come and make it out there one day. Looking forward to having you definitely, Emmanuel. Any time that you want to come and offer your gift, most welcome. Leave our listeners with a very powerful life quote and would love to get you back to keep us updated on all the good mm. that you're doing and many, many unlimited, overwhelming mm. oceans of blessings your way. Thank you so much. So I would love to leave the audience with the knowing that you are enough, that you are doing the best that you can and honor that. Don't be so hard on yourself. Life is here for you has always been here for you and never against you, and you are enough. I love that. And so you are. Thank you so much. All the very best for 2016, Emmanuel. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Wasn't that an inspirational conversation, my friends? What a beautiful spirit. Uh, that's Emmanuel Dagger. Just go to see him at easybreezyprosperity.com or at Emmanuel Dagger, that's D-A-G-H-E-R.com. You know what he hit on, which is something that I would love to amplify in today's conversation? Know who you are. Not what you are. What you are, you will get there eventually. At the tail end of the journey, after all the events and circumstances and situations that you're going to go through, your last breath that you take, you're going to get it. But prior to that, the knowing of who I am, this incredible soul and energy that's willing to put the best of him or herself in front, step by step, that's what we're calling you to do. Thank you so much for joining us on the air today. And remember, as I always close out our shows, you know, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission. We are here to love each other the same. So let's do that. And be kind with each other. And if you really want to change the world, just change yourself. Here's Lifted by Bliss. Take care, everyone.